going on, y'all? Okay, this is Hollywood Divas Reunion Season 2 Reunion Part 1, and I'm over it already. And you want to know why I'm over it? First of all, I believe just about everybody looks good. Uh, Countess looks the best to me, and that's just not because I like her. No, no, I ain't going to say she looked the best. It's a toss-up between Lisa Wu and Countess for me. You know, they had the better dress. Golden actually did look cute and look green, you know. Um... Paula, Paula could have did been okay, but I don't know. Something about her outfit just kind of threw me off. And then Elise come out there. It's her hair. Like she got a new, mm, a semi-used wig, a new semi-used wig on. And, um, it just, I don't know. It just makes her look older. She's, she, she's probably the oldest one on the whole cast and it just made her look older. And I was just a little bit confused as to what was... It looked like a crow's nest. It really do. But, um, you know, whatever. I was over it already. And let me tell you why. I really, really fucking wish... The only person that I can sit through doing a reunion... Hosting a reunion show of their own show or their own production that they produce behind the scenes or whatever... is Andy Cohen when he hosts the Real Housewives series reunions, okay? Because Andy, he ain't coming out there doing too much. You know, he gonna be a little shady bitch, okay? But he ain't coming out there prancing around. Yes, bitch, yes! Let me see it, let me jump, let me that, let me that, let me that. No, he ain't doing all of that. Carlos Kings came out there doing all of that shit, and I'm just like... And I knew what was going from there on. Mind you, he um hosted last year, and I wasn't here for it. Now he's here again. I'm like, damn, could you get somebody else to host? Like, it's so many black actresses or comedians or whatever who ain't out here really doing nothing. Let them host the reunion show. Okay, get them something to do. Like, I was just a little, ugh. I was just like, here we go. I mean, he come out trying to dance and all this stuff, cooning on the stage and shit for TV One. Like, you cooning for niggas. I'm sitting here like, what the fuck is going on? Yes, bitch. Come on, catch us with that big old booty. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, if you say yes in a shade and a T one more time, one more fucking time. Then Carla Paula flip flop, flip flippity flop. And I was like, wait a minute. That could be applied to Elise, you know. But Paula owned that shit. When um when uh Golden had that green dress on, he was like looking like a forest, and she was like, this the real forest or something like that. I that was like that was a cute little comeback, cute little shady point right there. That was cute. Here come Paula. This is what the real forest looked like. No, bitch. We ain't asked for all that. You look like some um intoxicated pollutionary wind. Okay? That's what you look like. So, you know, just stop it. And then they get into this whole thing about the white sisters and, you know, how Elise basically said she wasn't doing underhanded shit, then kind of found out that they were. And, you know, Lisa was like, you know, the way that she confronted her, she, Elise basically is trying to act as if, because Carlos King was basically like, you know, uh, everybody was saying that she was fucked up for that. She was like, I don't know who was everybody, but everybody who follows me said, did not say that. And I was like, girl, get the fuck out of here. Don't nobody barely follow your ass. But, um, Lisa, is she going to say something? And when you conduct business, you don't come to me at certain times, you know, at certain places or whatever. Lisa said, bitch, I will come to you anytime. Okay. When it's come to you trying to take my money. All right, I said, you better go off, Lisa. You better go off. Now, usually I would have said, no, you know, Elise, you right. There's a certain time and a place to do shit, but you's a sneaky, shady-ass bitch, okay? So, therefore, I'm on Lisa's side with that. Then they get in an uproar. Everybody trying to talk at once about the shit that's going on. And Paula was like, the only bitch that ain't had shit to say was Countess. She the one that don't get into it with nobody. And that's true. So, why is it that your husband always coming for her? So, then they get into continuing about who doing side deals paula put it out there saying that go did lisa and lisa did a side deal trying to get um was trying to get met up trying to get paula out and forced out and you know lisa was like no bitch <laughs> i'm loving this lisa lisa is like no you a fucking lie Okay, you're not finna sit up here and lie on me and say this. Golden had to say what it was and, you know, who did this and who did that. And then, you know, Paula was like, nah, you bitches lying and all this stuff and yada, yada, yada. 
Golden said, bitch, it's the fact that you drink so much that you probably don't remember and you probably smoke the shit up too. I said, you know what? This is only 20 minutes in. At this point in time, it was only really 15 minutes into the show. I was just like, you know they do commercials every five goddamn minutes on this goddamn show. That's what I hate about the reunion show for this shit. Uh, that's why it's two parts because they do too many fucking commercials. But... I was just like, you know, okay, Elise basically said that's not what happened. And, you know, she wasn't doing side deals. Elise, we can't take your words because, you know, you basically lie a lot. You just like Paula. And that's probably why y'all still cool. Y'all lie on each other. And then y'all get right back to each uh, and doing shit together. It was just, it was just like, did they start talking about Countess? Let me tell y'all this. Countess is on here looking good as fuck, Okay. I don't know if she been doing her crunches, her sit-ups, or whatever. I don't know if she went and got some more lipo. But, bitch, I can see the change. I can see the difference. That stomach is not really... It's still there, but it's not really there. Okay? she Unless she got on the waist trainer, boo. You know, she doing that shit. Ass is voluptuous. I said, where that big ass come from? Okay, we can see it now. You know, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. And I was like, okay, it counts as better. I ain't really like the hair. I ain't really like the color hair. But she was fucking doing it, okay? And you can just clearly tell from last season to this season, especially on the reunion show, like, her confidence is there. Her confidence is there, and she just don't give a fuck, bitch. And what else is there back? Countess voice, okay? Countess sounds like Kim Parker. And y'all know what I mean by that. Countess sounds like Kim Parker, okay? They was like, bitch, what happened to your voice? We hear it ain't the same no more. It's like high pitch. She said, bitch, I've been taking my thyroid mass, uh, medicine. I said, well, how come you ain't been taking that shit in the first place, bitch? You know, she probably just got a new um, diagnosis, a new uh, prescription or some shit. But either way, you sound good and you look good, bitch, okay? And they started talking about her um her selfie party and um just going through her little timeline and then they bring up the comment that Elise said. Okay, basically now I did say, you know, I was trying to be on Elise side for a minute only because when they showed this part in the um, season and they tried to replay it back, they did not replay the part when she did say, I really don't see a change. They played another part back, so that's what I was going off on. I'm putting that out there first because I know somebody going to say, well, bitch, you said this. I know what the fuck I said. But herself, at least herself said, the fact of the matter is, I said, you know, regardless of whatever she lost or gained or whatever, I never looked at it that way. I just looked at her as a beautiful person inside and out. I said, bitch, you lying. But, okay, you know, if that's what you want to roll with, that's what you want to roll with. Because season one, you were shading the fuck out of her way. All right? You you was indirectly shading the fuck out of her way. And I don't know if you knew you was doing it consciously or subconsciously, but that's what the fuck you was doing, okay? Taking her to these stores and putting on these ugly-ass clothes and shit like that. Girl, we knew what the fuck was up. And she said, you know, she was giving compliments and she was explaining it. And she said, she so to her, it just didn't look like anything, you know, that drastically of a change or some shit like that. And it was like, it's fucked up that, you know, you would take out of all of that that I said, that one little phrase. And I said, you know, Golden took it back to her trying to be shady. And then, you know, Golden tried to put it out there saying that, you know, she wasn't trying to be shady. She, she apologized. And I was like, okay, girl. If that's how you feel, then here come Carlos talking about some, um, you know, you saw Ray J and have you ever seen what Kim Kardashian said? And I was like, can we get over it? Can we get over it? I, I was just over it. I was like, such a messy queen. Messy. Then they started discussing the stuff about the boat trip. Well, part of it. The only stuff they really started discussing is about, um, you know, um, what's that thing called? When Shar left the girl off the flyer. Shar came out. First of all, Shar looked good, you know, for she looked good compared to the way that she been looking this whole season. Now we not gonna sit here and act like, you know, they fucked up the budget on Shar. They literally made her a guest of the a friend of the show, you know, for real, for real, and left her out the budget and said, Bitch, you do your own makeup and you put your own clothes on when they was on camera, okay? They left her for real, for real, for real. You know, but then they said, Okay, you're gonna be on the reunion show, so let us get you together. Hair, makeup, dress, shoes. All right? The dress was cute. Everything was cute. I was in about the shoes. But, okay, whatever. This is the best she's going to look all the time she's been on this damn show. Okay? So, they talking about, you know, her leaving Lisa off the flyer. And Lisa is one of the persons that she kind of got the closest to. And, you know, um, 
the way Golden reacted and all that stuff. And, you know, see, this is what I like about Char. Char ain't for that petty bullshit. She was like, you know what? My thing of it is, I did leave her off the flyer because I did not know her work as an actress. I should have looked it all up. I should have did this and I should have did that. So it was no foul, no harm. I didn't mean nothing by it, but I apologize. And I understand how come Golden attacked the way that she attacked because Golden was like, she was just like in big sister mode, you know, trying to take up for um Lisa or whatever. And, and, and Lisa was like, you know what? It's no issue because I understand. I'm a big sister and I would do the same damn thing. And it was kind of shady about, you know, you saying that uh, she ain't had no work since Moesha. And she was like, bitch, well, everybody know what the last thing I've been doing. I said, you know what? We do. Cashing up Britney Spears, Kevin Federline, Child Support Check. You better do that shit, bitch. But um, welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. How may I take your order? Okay, that was a good movie. That was one of my favorite movies forever and ever and ever. To the point that we got it on DVD after we got it on VHS. Come on now. Come on now. But um, anyway... You know, counsels were saying how she got on her too and said that it was a little bogus that she did that. But basically, everybody had a kumbaya moment and it was cool. Then they started talking about Elise and, you know, the man coming up to her and her boyfriend and how she don't want to reveal who it is. And when um, Golden was like, you know, when you're on a show, you're supposed to be transparent. You're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that. But, you know, you're supposed to pick and choose exactly what it is that you want to, you know, put out there. But before that, they was like, um, we gonna know who your baby daddy is. And, you know, she was like, I choose not to reveal those things. And Carlos said, well, Google do. And I said, oops, because we already know who your baby daddy is. All right, come on now. But, um, that was, I guess. And then they let Shark get off the stage. I was like, no, Shark stay. Shark stay. I would rather hear your opinion on this bullshit than theirs. So they get on, you know, a question from the audience. I thought her name was Camille from the shade room. I said, look at the fucking shade room. She was cute. Okay. So you the bitch behind all this foolery. All right. Shout out to you because that's how I get my daily entertainment. I be looking at that shit like, and y'all know y'all do too. Y'all be like, ain't this some shit? Niggas is dumb as fuck. And I thought I had it bad, but these motherfucking celebrities. But anyway, moving on, she basically asked, you know, so Paula, you always was talking, especially from season one, about, you know, making jokes and cracks about Countess Wade and her going to get plastic surgery and, you know, liposuction and all that stuff. But Chad come to find out, you're like the original butt injection queen on the black market. How do you feel about it now? Here come Paula. The girl can't even finish answer, asking her question. She's sticking her butt out all on the stage. And I'm like, whoever did your ass did a bad job, okay? We can see the residual effects of it, and it's not good. But, um, you know, she was basically like, yes, I am the mother of plastic surgery. And I said, no, you're not. You're the founder of plastic surgery. No, you're not. But, you know, I guess we're going to let you roll with it. Countess was trying to be funny. Was like, no, bitch, I got mine done first. And I was like, so y'all finna go back and forth about who got y'all asses done first. But, um... It is what it is. And I was just like, okay. So then they started talking about Countess and this witch project and how Countess basically said she don't trust Paula because Paula would take what you say and, um, you know, make it as hers. And basically they got back into it. All three of them, you know, Paula, Forrest, and Countess basically saying that they were trying to say that Countess was lying. And, you know, Paula want to put it out there. I've been trying to pitch a witch project since for over 10, 12 years. And that was the project that I was pitching and all this stuff. And Countess was like, no, you never came to me and asked me or told me, hey, I'm going to run this idea about so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and I was like, from what we saw and from what Countess said, that was her idea that you put out there. But if you want to say that that was your idea that you was up there pitching, okay, you know, of course, uh, Forrest want to get involved. And, you know, Countess like, bitch, I ain't trying to hear nothing you say, okay? And um, here come Paula. You don't like me. You don't like me. And that's fine. That's fine. Countess was trying to talk. And Countess said, no, bitch, don't you over talk me. And she was like, you know what? That's the problem. She don't like me. It was like, so you really think that she don't like you? And was like, no. The fact of the matter is I like you only when you sing. I said, there you go. There the fuck you go. I said, um, she was just doing all this stuff. And even Golden was like, look at this bitch. I, either Golden or Countess said, 
Quit, bitch, quit playing the victim. Here you go playing this victim card and shit. And that's all the fuck she does. Y'all know that's what Paula do. She gets into her feelings. She want to play victim. She want to say, woe is me. No one likes me. Bitch, it's your own personality and your own fault that nobody likes you if that's the case. Okay? And, you know, Golden was trying to take us for Countess. And once again, Paula was trying to overtalk. And it was like, bitch, damn, why don't you shut the fuck up? And even Golden was like, Forrest, how the fuck you deal with this? I hate when people try to overtalk with you when you're trying to get your point out. And then, you know, he had to cut to commercial break because they were just about to go in. Y'all trifling as fuck. <laughs> so they get into the dudes. First of all, the editing is horrible because when they came back off a of commercial break, it was just the girls up there. The next thing you know, all of a sudden they go into asking the questions and the dudes are right back on there. I said, whoever did this, they need to be fired because, you know, this ain't right. So, um... Basically, Axon did, you know, Forbes register, you know, the white sisters. He said, yeah, of course, he didn't get paid for. The only person that got paid for was Rashawn and all this stuff. And if he's a writer, this for hire, that means that, you know, everybody should have got paid and da 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 And I'm sitting here like, okay. And, you know, Paula going off once again. And it, it's not even worth reiterating because it was just gibberish. It was just fucking gibberish. Y'all making yourselves look ignorant. If y'all was once respectable people, you're no longer that, okay? And then Rashawn, you know, of course, they got a relationship. And he was like, the reason why I got pissed off is because, bitch, you called me a fucking girl. And all this shit. And he come forward. Why are you acting like this? And you was just acting like this outside, but this and that. Here comes Rashawn. Rashawn was basically like, you know... I want to apologize for calling you a bitch. He's tearing up. And the same time, Paula is still over talking. She was like, I got a mother. I got kids. I got this. I got a daughter. And one day they going to see this. Here go Paula. Oh, so I ain't got no son. I was like, Paula, shut the fuck up and let him speak. He is trying to apologize as to why he wants to apologize for his actions. Because he don't want his family to see this and be like, bitch, you was kind of wrong and off the chain for doing that. It ain't about you having a son. It ain't about you, bitch. And then when she told that shit to him, talking about son, don't come to me without no condom because I'll fuck, I'll fuck the shit out of you or some shit like that. I was like, girl, whatever. And then, you know, Golden and her get into it once again. And because Paula was like, the only person that brought something to the table was Golden. Lisa said, bitch, please. Lisa was over it. I forgot what she said to Golden, but Golden was like, bitch, look at you um, with your ass all out, with your panties and stuff showing. She was like, bitch, I ain't got no panties on and all that shit. And um, I forget what Golden said, but Golden basically said, hold on. Golden said, you look so damn cheap, you need to be on the corner, boo-boo. Okay, that, okay, I will give it to Golden. Golden had some of the best one-liners on here. You know, she was kind of reading Paula tonight, but... Oh, it is what it is. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about this part one. I can't wait till part two is over with because I'm over this. Child, I'm tired. Peace.